Hello and welcome to Inside Iraq. I'm Jassim Azawi. National reconciliation is Iraq's holy grail. All previous reconciliation conferences have ended up in total collapse. Al Maliki's latest overture to the Ba'athist has met with a sharp attack. You are nothing but a lackey of the occupation, a senior Ba'athist said, and you will be the first to flee the country when the Americans leave. Al Maliki's rivals derided his Oliver Branch as an early election gambit designed to show him as the healer of the nation. The inclusion or exclusion of the Ba'athist will test Iraq's fledgling political process and reveal whether fear and religion will trump expediency and nationalism. It was an unprecedented move which caught many Iraqis by surprise. Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki's latest call for reconciliation with members of the former regime. The call came in the wake of al-Maliki's strong showing in the recent provincial elections. He urged Iraqis to forgive those who worked and were forced to work with Saddam Hussein's Ba'ath Party, so long as they did not commit crimes against civilians. Al-Maliki's overture is seen as a major political move towards Iraqi national reconciliation. I feel that national reconciliation which you lead and the current policy have led to more stability. Hope has emerged toward a prosperous future. Thousands of Ba'athists had been sacked from the civil service and military following the US-led invasion in 2003. The purge was a major source of tension between the mainly Sunni insurgency and al-Maliki's Shia-dominated government. Al-Maliki revoked some parts of the so-called depathification purge in January 2008. However, many Shia and Kurds who were targeted by Saddam's regime are unlikely to forgive or forget. Reconciliation, whether with the Ba'athist or even the Sunni armed group, is valuable and it gives credit to al-Maliki. Al-Maliki seeks reconciliation and the return of the Ba'ath party in order to win them all his side, Sunnis and Shias alike. Critics point out that al-Maliki's offer is linked to his need for wider political support ahead of the parliamentary elections in December. Al-Maliki is also under pressure to hasten the pace of reconciliation, both political and sectarian, as US troops will be withdrawn by August next year. Questions remain as to how the call to include former Ba'athists into the political mainstream might impact Iraq's stability. To explore prospects and examine predictions of national reconciliation, I'm delighted to welcome from Baghdad, Saleh al-Mutlaq, leader of the National Dialogue Front, and from New York, Hamid al-Bayati, Iraq's envoy to the United Nation. And from London, Burhan al Chalabi, fellow at the Royal Institute for International Affairs, better known as Chatham House. Burhan al Chalabi, let me start with you. The conditions placed by al Maliki on his offer for national reconciliation, many people think he pretty much scuttled it when he put all these conditions on them. National reconciliation as a political process for conflict resolution can work, but under cert certain circumstances. Unfortunately, in this particular case, it's meaningless and it's irrelevant within the context provided by Maliki, because frankly, the Iraqi people need to know who are they being asked to reconcile with. Those people who, you know, who, who betrayed Iraq and you know, collaborated with the American invasion of Iraq, the pro-Iranian uh, armed militias, who were responsible for the ethnic cleansings of thousands of Iraqi families that has facilitated the current dominance of Iran over the green zone in southern Iraq? Or is it the million or so widow that have lost loved ones for no fault of their own? Or is it the Iraqi orphans who have found themselves homeless and traumatized? Or perhaps is it, is it uh, with those who have paraded over the American tanks and with the hands of the Iraqi women and children on their blood, on their hands? Or is it those who have ordered the execution of the president of Iraq and dismantled the entire Iraqi state for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to appease their masters in the United States and Tehran? Or is it perhaps the tens of thousands of youth who are now locked in American jails and Iraqi jails for okay. no reason except for being born Iraqis. So, or is it finally, it is a clever political maneuver in order to legitimize the occupation through a political spin and escape international justice 
for violating United Nations resolutions okay. and the human rights of the Iraqi people through the act of the war and its consequences. Hamid al-Bayati, although Burhan al-Chalapi belongs to academia, he is not a member of the resistance and he is not a Ba'athist. But he's a true reflection of a great segment of the people who looks at al-Maliki's offer and look at it and they don't see anything in it. Let me say a reconciliation with Omni Group. The condition which Maliki put is that they should lay their arms before they start uh, the process of reconciliation. Is that an impossible condition? Do you think you can reconcile with people who are killing Iraqis every day? Car bombs were everywhere in the market, killing women and children. This is very well known in the world. I don't want to um, uh, answer the pathetic rhetoric of Saddam, and definitely whoever defends Saddam and his regime is uh, with that kind of people who, whose hand really uh, stand with Iraqi blood. Now, again, with the Ba'athist, uh, al-Maliki said we are ready to reconcile with the Ba'athist in one condition, that they will walk under another name. We are accepting the Ba'athist, and the Ba'ath party was responsible for all the bloodshed, the wars against neighboring countries. What about the invasion of Kuwait and breaking all the international laws, invading an Arab neighboring country, killing people? Is that the, um, the way um, uh, Burhan Chalabi and his group want to bring Iraq back to? And we want to have a real reconciliation with those honest people. Saleh Al-Mutlaq, let me ask you simply, why would Al-Maliki need the Ba'athist? Now that he is riding high in the saddle, he's uh, showing in the provincial elections, and he is uh, gathering around him a great segment of Iraqi society. So why would he need the Ba'athist? Well, after all, the Ba'athists are Iraqis, and they, uh, most of them helped the country. They built the country for 35 years. And uh, without the Ba'athists, the al-Maliki and his government could not bring stability and the security in Iraq. In fact, most of the effort which was done on the security issue was done by those who are in the army. They were a previous Ba'athists. And I think al-Maliki now, he wants to be a, a state man, not only a da'wah party member. He needs some uh, uh, professional people who has the experience to build the country. And those are mostly Ba'athist. You know, there was, there was a 35 years building of, of the country. And those people who shared that process, most of them, they are outside the country now. And I think al-Maliki needs at least some of them to come back under the name of reconciliation. Frankly speaking, I don't think al-Maliki personally, or al-Maliki as part of al-Da'wah party, could really reconcile with the others. But I think it's the interest of the al-Maliki and the interest of the government to bring part of the Ba'athist to the process so that they could build a state uh, after uh, six years uh, trying from them to build the state, but they could not build the state. They made a government, they formulate a government, but they cannot build a state. I want to answer Mr. Bayati. I would rather like to invite him also to defend, uh, uh, to be against the invasion on, 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 on Iraq, at the same time that he is against the invasion of Kuwait. Go ahead, Hamid al-Bayati. Well, um, we were against the invasion of Iraq, and we stated that in public statement, which was reflected in the media. I don't think an Iraqi um, would like to see the invasion of the country. However, when the um, Allies decided to invade Iraq, we advised them not to have an occupation. We advised them not to dismantle the army or the police force. Uh, but they didn't listen to we us. This is very obvious. I think they have their own policies. Uh, we didn't support the invasion, and those who support Saddam, I think they know that Saddam was brought by the American initially to power, and the Ba'ath Party was brought to power by Western intelligence. Burhan al-Chalabi, the leader of the Accordance Front, Adnan al said that the Maliki's offer is nothing more than an electioneering gambit. Do you see it that way? I do, I do uh, believe that it is you know, a political spin. But at the, end, at the end of the day, to answer Mr. Bayati, Iraq, the, uh, the Allies would not have been able to invade Iraq 
without the collaboration of the so-called Iraqi opposition. If we are going to hold people accountable and responsible for the crimes, those who have committed the crimes against Iraq by the act of the war and the invasion of the war, who are currently walking the streets of London, Baghdad, and Washington, safe in the knowledge that they have got away with murder, these people should be held accountable also. And I think it's only a matter of time where the, the full weight of the international law will catch up with them. So therefore, this cliche about what Iraq has done during the Ba'athist regime, Iraq was a sovereign, independent, secular state. Iraq today is an occupied, sectarian, personalized state. And that is courtesy of people like yourself who have collaborated with the occupation, occupiers. Thank you, Burhan El Chalabi. When we come back, I'm going to ask Hamid El Bayati, how can you distinguish between the Ba'athist and the Ba'ath? Stay with us. We must reconcile with those who committed mistakes, who were obliged in that difficult era to side with the past regime. Today, they are again sons of Iraq. Nouri al-Maliki, Iraqi Prime Minister.